Hello, today we're going to be taking a look at this all-in-one Raspberry Pi monitor. Um, let's take a look. Um, this is supposed to allow for touchscreen integration with Raspberry Pis. I happen to have a few of those, so let's see what the experience is like and how well it performs. Oh wow, that's actually really nice. All right. So it looks like you got like even a little stand here. Okay. Um, what do we come? What does it come with? It comes with USB-C cables, uh, mini HDMI cables, USB-C adapters, user manuals. Screws, uh, adapters of a lot of different adapters. Holy crap! Um, give it a shot, shall we? Even has like a vase mount or whatever. It looks like on the back here. There's probably a screw underneath here, if I would assume. Yep. The hinge is a little uh, sticky. Oh, wow. <clears throat> there you go, on the back here. So it looks like all you do is you take your Raspberry Pi and uh, you plug in all your adapters. Wow, this is actually really nice. I don't know if it's compatible with the Raspberry Pi version I have though. It's the only concern I have. Okay. Then it looks like we take there's all these little chips here. USB C definitely, we're not it's type C. Well, let's give it a shot. So, I think I have uh, a version of Raspberry Pi installed on here, or the Raspbian installed. Um, my only issue is there's no battery in here. That'd be nice if it included a battery. Touch feedback is a little delayed, and a little bit off, actually. Um, I would say there's probably like a five to ten millisecond delay on the um, on the mouse and the input. Um, I don't know what that comes from if it's from screen delay or whatever. But overall, it's um, capacitive touch, which means that you're not actually pressing between two screens to get contact. It's full, similar to like iPads or the new phones or whatever. Um, basically, what Apple came out with. Screen itself isn't that precise, especially when you're trying to when you're trying to go through and you're trying to like close out of something. It's not particularly precise. You have to get really, really fine and detailed in there. Even then, you're still struggling a little bit to close. Out. I mean, I would obviously, I would obviously increase the um, scale of some of the icons, but still, even with the increase in size, it still is not as precise as I would like it to be. Some things I do and don't like about this. Um, first off, something I just noticed is that the power button on the back here, um, well, first things first, the bottom here gets extremely hot. Whoa. Um, second of all, uh, the power button on the back here instantly shuts it off. So if you accidentally bump it or something when you're trying to mess with the buttons, um, I don't know, you accidentally push it, it's immediately shut off. It doesn't do any like, you know, power just straight off, um, which is if you're in the middle of doing something or, you know, you're, you're writing or your operating system is writing to your the SD card at the wrong time, wrong place, uh, you end up corrupting stuff too that way. So that's just a, and that's not that hard of a button to like accidentally push 
either. I could understand if it was somewhere a little bit different than next to all the other buttons that control like brightness and everything on the screen, but having it right there just seems like a, a bad idea. Um, <clears throat> what else? Um, the touch screen, the touch itself, the act of touching is pretty good. The screen itself being capacitive or um, like all glass and using the finger to kind of connect the circuit. Um, basically is a lot better than having like, you know, two screens and having to push one to make contact with the other. So no issues with that there. The um, precision on this is very, it's about, I would say a centimeter off. Um, so you're looking at something that can be anywhere from like, and most of the time is off. It's, it's not in the center of your finger, it's a bit off. Um, I tried messing with it. I think given what it's doing and if you were to set up, you know, the proper touch screen on the bottom here, I honestly think it's, it's fine. I think it's for what you're doing. You could probably get like a pen or something and you could definitely make this work as like a cool little touch pad or whatever to draw on and stuff. I don't think this would be that difficult to do. Um, and I think that the screen is good enough. Obviously with the, if you were to get a stylus though, you would have to, you know, probably not use your hand. It probably doesn't have all the smart features um, like an iPad or anything would. Um, so just keep that in mind as well with the stylus. Um, but overall, I mean, given what it is, it's a touch screen, it's a decent resolution. And the bezels are still rather large, but I mean, it, it is more of an enthusiast thing and it's supposed to take advantage of um, the enthusiast market and actually, you know, allow you to do some, integrate some cool things. If you're just using it as a touch screen and putting some basic software on there to access and look and view stuff and monitor stuff, I honestly think it's, it's perfectly fine. You attach a camera to it, you know, use it as something to watch your 3D prints or something remotely. I think honestly, it'd be just fine. Um, I think honestly, you could use it pretty good for that as well. So would I recommend buying this? Um, it depends. It depends on what, what you're actually you know, using this for. If you're expecting to be using this as a drawing tablet, uh, I mean, for whatever this would cost in total, maybe like $200, I mean, it's not bad. Um, but I think that, you know, getting a, an old Samsung or an iPad um, would probably be better uh, just because, or just an old tablet or something would probably be better. Um, I mean, if you're trying to teach your kids a lot about uh, programming, then maybe. Um, if that's the case, especially because Raspberry Pis are so popular to mod, I know they have some output cables here, um, but I would have liked to see maybe a connector that pushes the um, GPIO out um, so you can actually access that outside of the case rather than um, you know having to open it up and route wires every time you want to like you know do some cool circuit because that would be really cool. A good application of this would be to have buttons on here that control the GPIO and then therefore control other devices or do things, I think that would be a very good application. I'm just a little disappointed that the only way you can do that is through this little output here. I wish that was maybe, you got all the space on the bottom here, maybe like a, a J-shaped connector that pops it all out there. Other than that though, um, for just a display, uh, it's pretty good. For 1080p display, um, given the fact that it's fully integrated into the Raspberry Pi, I think it's pretty solid. Touchscreen display, pretty solid. Um, only concern is just, as I said earlier, that the touch isn't that accurate, but if you know what all you're using it is for is just a simple touch screen and doesn't have to be that accurate, then by all means go ahead. So I think that's a it's a pretty solid uh, screen, and I think that the fact that it integrates to the Raspberry Pi is nice. I just wish it would include the um, GPIO in a way that was easily accessible. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day, and uh, check out the other videos in this channel in which we take a look and review all other kinds of tech.